Microsoft June 2025 announcements. Let's dig straight into it, shall we? Because there's plenty to run through. What I also want to do is start off by just giving you a bit of an overview as to where am I getting this information from. So it's the Partner Center announcements page available on learn.microsoft.com. This is where you can track everything for the last 12 months, dig into it bit by bit. It makes it really easy to navigate. I think Microsoft does a really good job in terms of catering to different audiences. So for example, having fluffy, lovely blogs that they put out. But for me, getting information, understanding what's happening, what's changing, what's the impact, what are the next steps, what's important, Head into the Microsoft Learn page is just where you need to go in order to get the information that you need. Not all the fluff around it, they're in the blogs. This is just, hey, what's the change? What's happening? And I always use this example, but I remember when they did the Dynamics 365 price changing and they did all these great blogs and videos or whatever else about it. But I went into learn.microsoft.com and I got given this great table that was just, hey, this is what the price was, this is what the price is going to be, this is the date it comes into effect. That's all I needed to know. I don't need all the fluff around it. I just need to know the information and this is the best place to go for that, that's for sure. So let's just dig straight into this, shall we? So first things first, I wanted to highlight the Partner Center Technical Corner blog, the June 2025 edition. There is some fantastic information in there. What I am going to do is dig in a little bit into well, what are the key announcements that you're going to hear and see from this. So let's dig straight in, shall we? You know, the latest edition of this blog is live featuring updates on AI assistant capabilities, tools for small and medium enterprises and security enhancements. And partners can explore bulk fraud event updates, uh, co-sal plan priorities, and flexible billing schedules. So there's a lot of information in here. So let's dig straight into it, shall we? With the starting with that first point, AI assistant enhancements. So AI assistant in preview now provides expanded support for partner incentives, co-op inquiries, including deadlines and qualifying activities. There's a new AI assistant anywhere. Anywhere Scenarios allows partners to analyze earning trends, uh, payment details, and revenue insights. Support ticket creation can now be initiated directly through the AI Assistant panel. So some really good enhancements there in terms of what that's doing and how that benefits partners. Optimizing small and medium enterprises. Just a couple of little updates here as well. So channel transfers are now available at renewal. Streamlining the EA to C EA to CSP transitions. It's not like Microsoft Microsoft to have all these initialisms, is the um, automated cancellation process for duplicate subscriptions simplifies many to one upgrades. End of sale. EOS SKU upgrades uh, allow partners to change terminal uh, terms uh, while moving to higher tier offerings. And there's also new free year terms for select enterprise SKUs. So for example, Microsoft 365, E3, E5, and Teams Enterprise. There's been some security enhancements also. So bulk fraud event updates via API for increased efficiency in managing alerts. And also mandatory MFA, multi-factor authentication for Partner Center Portal starting August 30th, 2025. And API access from April 1st, 2026. Some additional updates as well. The claiming partner of record, CPOR enhancement. So for business applications, CSP subscriptions now count towards solutions partner designations. I know this is something that partners have been clamoring for for years. I've been around this industry for seven to eight years now. I've been in that dynamic space and I know that this is what partners have been asking for. It's great that it has now come to fruition. Um, so that is a huge one. I've got more information on that to come as well. Um, also, the referral confidence score powered by machine learning to improve inbound referrals and flexible billing schedules introduced for marketplace private offers quarterly, semi-annually uh, and bi-monthly options available. So just a couple of next steps for partners on this one is to leverage AI assistance to streamline incentive claims and revenue tracking. This is an important one. I've called this out a few times in videos, but 80% of co-op isn't spent. 
Partners don't understand what they have access to, what incentives they get, um, what co-op they have access to, what they can spend that on. So if you're leveraging AI Assistant, I think if it helps partners, A, get what's coming to them, but B, also utilize everything that's coming to them to help them grow their business, then that is phenomenal. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. Update channel transfer processes to align with EA to CSP transitions. Ensure compliance with MFA requirements before enforcement dates and explore new flexible billing schedules to optimize customer agreements. So just a couple of next steps there on all those things around those announcements. Let's just check out the next one, which is the extended multi-year contract durations that are now available. Now there is a table view of this. I'm not going to go into detail on this. I've got some bullet points around this on the next slide. Feel free to take a screenshot or, again, go check out learn.microsoft.com in the Partner Center announcements. You'll be able to see this table for yourself. But again, this is what I'm talking about with just straightforward information. Nice, simple table. What's the contract duration? Is one time upfront billing available? Is monthly equal billing? You know, it gives you the information that you need, right? It doesn't go into the fluff. But in terms of a bit of fluff, what's the, what's the, uh, the bullet points that I could go through here? So the new contract durations, Microsoft now supports up to five-year terms for SaaS, professional services, and virtual machine software reservations, uh, customer benefits, so longer contracts provide pricing stability, easier expense forecasting, and potential cost savings. The partner advantages helps partners reduce administrative overhead, strengthen customer relationships, and secure predictable revenue streams. Uh, public and private offers, so extended durations apply to both public and private marketplace offers, ensuring flexibility. New term options, SaaS and professional services now support four and five year uh, terms, while virtual machine software reservations add two, four and five year terms. Uh, billing flexibility, contract support monthly, annual, and flexible billing schedules depending on the offer type. And then the next steps for the partners on this one is to update existing offers or create new plans with extended durations uh, and then configure private offers accordingly. So there's some information there on that. Also, AI assistant support for co-op, CPOR, and workshop claims. Again, what I wanted to highlight first is just Go back into learn.microsoft.com. You can dig into uh, some really great information. One thing that I do like and I've gone on to there is it gives you some examples of, um, of uh, prompts. The words slipped my mind there, but some sample prompts. There it is. It's right in front of me. Sample prompts of how you can best use AI Assistant. I really like that. I think, you know, it gives you something to go off to begin with. So again, this isn't on the Partner Center announcements page. You can actually see if I just hover my mouse over here, it's on a completely different area here, but it is under Partner Center documentation. So you delve into Partner Center. What can AI assistants do in the incentives workspace? Um, but you've also got it for everything else using AI assistant in billing, in customers, in earnings, in membership, in pricing, everything. And it'll have those sample prompts and so on. So again, I really like that. It's how you can best use these tools that are going to benefit you even more so. But let's just delve into it, shall we, in a bit more detail. You've got expanded AI assistant capability now supports inquiries related to co-op, uh, claiming partner of record and workshop claims. You've got claim tracking, um, you know, partners can check claim status, uh, statuses, uh, list pending actions and retrieve associated partner and customer IDs, co-op claim insights, AI assistant can trace all incentives linked to a claim, list automatically approved claims and provide next required actions. Policy guideline, uh, guidance uh, continues to assist with questions regarding Microsoft Commerce incentives, policies, and program guidelines. Predefined prompts. Partners can use structured queries to quickly access relevant claim details. Again, just highlight a couple of next steps there, but explore the AI system prompt guide that you can see there on the right-hand side in the incentives workspace uh, to streamline claim management. I strongly recommend this. Um, I can't stress this enough. Again, 80% of co-op is not claimed. It's insane to me because that is money that if you don't use it, you lose it and you can use it to invest it back in your business. Hey, you could use it to hire me as a consultant, but you can just use that 
to really benefit your business. Uh, you can use it to train your teams. You can use it to pay uh, for conferences and so on. There's so much you can use it for. Um, so it frustrates me that 80% isn't, isn't claimed for. So again, using AI assistance to help you there. Um, Microsoft AI Cloud Partner Program updates. Again, there's a whole host of information available to you as a partner, overview decks, and also the AI um, Partner Program Benefits Guide as well. There's a lot of information in there that you can dig into as well. So let's dig into all these updates, shall we? Because there is quite a few. So I'm going to dig into absolutely all of these. But the AI Assistant Anywhere expansion. We've already talked about this a few times, but it's now integrated across multiple sections of the benefits page, providing instant answers to common questions and provisioning and activation. Uh, learn linking authentication update. Uh, starting June 3rd, 2025, users must authenticate using account credentials. So, for example, at Microsoft.com for improved security. AI Assistant in Membership Offers and Solution Partner Designation. So AI Assistant now helps partners navigate membership queries and qualification requirements. Again, these are things that I've spoken to so many partners about as well, where they don't fully know whether or not they they are how far away they are from attaining a designation or an advanced specialization. So the fact that you can use AI Assistant to help you with that, brilliant. SMB Track for Azure Solution Areas, so partner Partners can now access insights for data and AI, uh, digital and app innovation, and infrastructure in the insights workspace. Security SMB path for solutions partner designation. Um, so a new SMB path is available for security solution partner designation, helping partners qualify more efficiently. Azure specializations, uh, v.next for AI applications. So partners can now use completed Azure Innovate engagements to meet specialization requirements without an audit. Uh, training services designation renewals. Partners with their enrollment win it. Within their enrollment window, can renew their training services designation uh, (TSP) to maintain exclusive benefits. Certified software designations expansion. So seven certified software designations now offer top tier benefits, including Azure and industry AI specializations. Signature cloud support benefit cap starting June 23rd, 2025. The unlimited partners cloud support benefit will be capped at 50 incidents per year. Uh, this tells me that we're doing our job because Again, we should be using these benefits, technical pre-sales and deployment services. This was one of them. Uh, it was unlimited. Clearly, more and more partners are becoming more switched on to what they get as a partner. I'm probably overusing those, but that's fine. Um, but again, it'll be, it'll be capped at 50 per year. Uh, security SMB Track Insights Partners. Uh, can now access data and insights related to security solutions, partner designations in the insights workspace, uh, skilling updates for Azure specializations, so certifications for analytics, data warehouse migration, and enterprise application migration are being updated or replaced. Only a few more now. Um, there's upcoming training services partner qualification training uh, changes. So a new free bucket courseware with a model will replace the current two bucket structure in July 2025. Microsoft AI Cloud Partner Program Concierge, a new unified go-to-market benefit replaces multiple existing marketing consultations that will be launching July 21, 2025. And new Copilot specialization, a specialization for Microsoft 365 Copilot, Copilot Studio, and Copilot Extensibility will be available in July 2025. So quite a few updates there for the AI Cloud Partner Program. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview. Again, you can dig into this in all the detail uh, on the websites that I've shown. This is just a reminder that Microsoft is putting out in terms of the changes to partner of record, 
um, assignment for CSP resellers, um, and that is coming. So uh, be effective September 1, 2025. Microsoft will enforce compliance checks for indirect resellers assigned as partner of record on new CSP subscriptions. Um, the partner location account API and UI will be updated to ensure only authorized indirect resellers can be assigned as partner of record. Uh, reseller requ uh, compliance requirements. So indirect resellers must have an active CSP tenant, accept the Microsoft partner agreement and be associated with a distributor in their CSP region. Distributor responsibilities. Distributors must review CSP overview documentation, test POR assignments uh, in sandbox environments and use the Insights dashboard to identify invalid partner of records. So a bit of work there for my friends within the distribution space. Uh, avoiding service disruptions. Uh, resellers should ensure compliance before September 1, 2025 to prevent any disruptions um, in CSP transactions. In terms of training and support, Microsoft actually did hold a couple of training sessions. They had CSP technical training session, which was on May the 14th, uh, and then a partner Q&A community call, which was on May the 15th. Now, the good thing is, if I just go on to the next slide, you'll see the, uh, there's a whole host of next steps on this one. But those community calls, you can just go and uh, register to watch those recordings. So I know I've just called out sessions that happened in the past. The good thing is you can still register and watch those recordings back. You can see uh, they take a bit of time, one hour for one and 75 minutes for another, but well worth doing. There's a whole host of next steps here, though, uh, that I just wanted to highlight there on the left-hand side. So I'm not going to talk through every single one of them. You can take a screenshot. You can pause this. You can read it through. Um, that's everything that you need to know. So that's it for the update so far in June 2025. Uh, no doubt there'll be more to come whenever you check the announcements page at the beginning of the month and the end of the month. There's more on there. So I'll keep an eye out on that and do a video as and when it requires. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Have a good day and have a great week. Thank you.